Hello, my name is Sister Patricia Helene Earle, and I'm a member of the Congregation of the Sister Servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Today, I would like to share with you my thoughts about Catholic identity and how to make it come alive again in this time of post-COVID, we hope, and see what we can do to make certain that we continue to promote the heart of our Catholic schools. So I'm gonna share my screen and bring that up to you in just a second and proceed from there. So this is the NCEA Leadership Summit in 2021. And I'm delighted to be a part of this time with you today. I thought that it was important to talk about Catholic identity because in this time where we are looking at COVID and we've had so many effects of it, many of our schools have been able to be open. Some have had partly open, partly virtual. Others have had to be virtual. There has been a lot of effects on our schools have our children learned? Are they up to grade level? What are the different issues that we are dealing with in our schools, particularly following the peak of COVID? And again, as COVID seems to be on the rise, what are we doing then to energize our return to school, even if we were able to have in-person classes? And I think we've talked a lot about you know, reading and math and language and, and all of the different subjects at whatever grade level. We've talked about the importance of looking at our children and their social needs. But we want to be certain that because our faith is so close to us, we can just assume that, you know, it's there and it's going to continue. But we need to be aware of the fact that just as our children, our students, whatever grade level, have missed the opportunity to begin a school year and have all of the academics throughout the year, they've also missed a lot of that interaction about our faith. And so we need to be certain that we as the educators are raising awareness of Catholic identity, renewing our thoughts about Catholic identity, and making that faith dimension, that formation of faith, the primary goal of our Catholic schools, even as we continue to provide the best in academics and other areas of the total formation of the child. And so we need to recognize that when we speak about Catholic identity, and this is true whether we're talking about a preschool or a high school or an elementary school or anything in between, um, all members of the faculty and staff share in that. While the religion teachers have that primary responsibility to teach the faith at whatever grade level, to bring the children to a deeper love and awareness of Jesus and who Jesus is in their lives, we recognize that all of our teachers, our coaches, our staff need to be able to integrate the faith into what they are doing. If not teaching the formal subject of religion, certainly giving example to living a faith-filled life, a life that demonstrates solid moral values, virtues, and that is ethically sound. We need to, by our example, give witness to the importance of that Catholic identity. And we may say, well, we know that, we do that. Well, when we start talking about so many other areas of importance, it's easy to overlook our Catholic identity. And sometimes when we overlook speaking about things, we inadvertently give a message that it's not important. And so the purpose of this session today is to go over again, what are some key elements that contribute to Catholic identity? And being aware of these things, then what are some things that you can continue to do in your own schools as you come back to a new year where children, whatever age, are excited to learn. They're happy to be with their friends, but we also need to remind them that we are happy to be together so that we can pray together, worship together, grow in our knowledge and love of Jesus together. And so as we look at that, we need to recognize that 
what are some of the essentials of Catholic identity? How do we know if a school is a Catholic school? What are those external pieces that make us aware that it is a Catholic school? How does our curriculum reflect the Catholic community? Are we aware of the issues that need to be looked at in our choice of textbooks? Are we addressing, especially in the older grades and high school grades, issues that our students need to understand to some extent and how it impacts their faith and how their faith should impact their understanding of some of these issues? What example do all adult members of your school community try to give to our students? We are blessed with wonderful Catholic schools and people who contribute their time, their energy, their whole lives to developing a solid Catholic education and to wanting to not only teach our children, form them academically, prepare them for their life's vocation, but at the heart of that, help them in their faith formation to come and know Jesus. And finally, what do you expect from your students at the end of the day? And certainly by the time they graduate, whether that's from preschool, kindergarten, elementary or secondary. These are questions that I think I would encourage you to take back to your faculty, back to your schools and discuss these so that this Catholic identity is not just a very vague floating term that we don't know what it is, but we're looking concretely at the ways in which we want to make our Catholic identity very meaningful and very, very appropriate. What are the key components that contribute to fostering, forming, and facilitating the development of Catholic identity in our schools? knowing that it really depends on all of us to be able to get together and build that Catholic identity. So how do we build it? Some of you may have seen this anagram in some other presentations I've done as a broad reference. Today, I'd like to really look at what do we mean by, what are some of those practical factors that contribute to our Catholic identity? And so what I've done is taken the two words, Catholic and identity, and I've come up with some concrete ways of looking to see what does Catholic identity mean in our schools. There are many church documents we could look at, and I encourage you to do that. But that is not our purpose for today's session. I really want to look at some of the ways in which we can continue the work that we started pre-COVID, that we've tried our best to continue during the peak of COVID, and that we don't want to lose now as we move forward. So looking at the word at the C, I've used C to equal crucifix. The crucifix is an external symbol, and therefore, while Catholic also means the universal church, we need to recognize some of the externals that make up our Catholic school. Uh, you know, religion teachers need to be aware of these, but so do all of the members of our Catholic schools. So we need to look at that crucifix, for example, and remind ourselves and our students age appropriately that it is there to remind us of Jesus' great saving act of love in his passion, death, and resurrection. And this is the heart of our faith. We need to look at other external signs and recognize that the signs do not make the faith, but they are reminders to help us see why our Catholic culture and identity is so important to us. We look at various liturgical seasons during the year and we look at the external signs as a reminder, the Advent wreath in Advent, the Christmas crib, the Lenten ashes and palms, the May shrine and May procession in May dedicated to Our Lady. And we could go on with so many. Mary is central. 
Mary, we have usually a statue of Mary in our classrooms, not because we're worshiping a statue, but to remind us of the great role that Mary has in the life of Jesus and how she is the mediatrix. She is that mediator to help us through life, to help us see more clearly what, our, what her son wants us to know and how we need to grow in our relationship with him. We may have other statues in our classroom, the patron of our parish, the patron of our community, and other articles that are devotional, that speak to us. But we need to be certain that we are sharing with our children why they're there and what, they're, what they mean. And ideally, particularly in the elementary grades, to have a prayer corner in the classroom with various externals, a Bible, a rosary, maybe some lives of the saints, some holy pictures to remind us of the importance of prayer, the importance of Jesus in our lives, the important people and the role model that the saints are in our daily lives. And we need to recognize that we, as we teach religion, we bring in these externals of our faith. It's just scratching the surface, but these are the things that remind us of our faith in the Lord and why we are baptized and why we are followers of Jesus. So in Catholic identity, the word A stands for atmosphere. We need to go beyond the external objects and we need to look at what is the tone that we set in our school that allows all members as well as visitors to recognize that it is a Catholic school. We go beyond the externals and we move to creating an atmosphere that reminds us of the presence of Christ, that gives example by the way we show our care, a caring manner towards all, visitors as well as students, staff, other faculty, administrators, and of course, parents. We need to emphasize the importance of responsibility, certainly respect for one another, and then responsibility in fulfilling what is asked of us, whether us being the administration, the faculty staff, the students or the parents, so that we recognize that when we engage in those responsible actions, we are exercising the reality that we are responsible for our actions. We need to promote courtesy and politeness and other spiritual values so that our school reflects that Christ-like manner. We recognize that we not only talk about values, but in a Catholic school, we talk about virtue. Virtue is that habitual action by which we do good. And it is taught, but it is also caught or not caught by the example we give. And obviously, charity must be evident in our schools from the moment that we enter the school. T stands for tradition. It's the rich history and legacy of our school, the foundation of the parish, the school, the charism of a community founder or a founding pastor. It's so important that we can go beyond the um, actual externals and we go back and think about our roots and our heritage. We know that in the Middle Ages, monasteries were the places of great learning. We look at in the United States, for example, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and St. John Newman are just two of the major founders of Catholic schools in America. Religious communities came to teach the immigrants and build our nation on that idea of having the freedom to worship. Each school then needs to reflect on its foundation as a parish or school and to know what is the charism, what are those major qualities that we associate with the founder. And as a church, we need to look to the saints as our role models. We need to understand that not only do we come to worship Jesus at mass, on our Sunday obligation, but we have special holy days in the church. 
where the church asks us to treat those days the same way we would a Sunday, to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate the motherhood of Jesus, to celebrate the Assumption of Mary, to celebrate All Saints Day, to celebrate Jesus' ascension, and the list goes on. And so we need to recognize then that these holy days, and they do change somewhat in other countries, but the holy days that we have, do we teach those to our children age appropriately? And do we tell them why these days are holy? If you're in school on a holy day, what do you do to celebrate that in addition to going to mass? If your diocese uses that holy day as a day of a holiday, it needs to be a reminder then that we are called to attend mass. And why are we asked to do that? Our traditions also revolve around what do we do with the liturgical year in Advent and Lent, Christmas and Easter, and the May procession, as we mentioned earlier. And from that to look at why does the priest wear purple in Advent and Lent? Why does the priest wear white for Christmas and Easter? Why does the priest wear other liturgical colors, for example, red, when it is the feast of a martyr who has given his life. And what do we mean by ordinary time? It's not just ordinary. Every day is special. And Father wears those green vestments as a sign of hope that we make every day special before the Lord. We need to think about those merry feasts the month of the Holy Rosary in October, and are we doing something to celebrate that? The month of Our Lady in May, and do we have a May procession or some type of a tradition that honors Our Lady? And then respect for life. This is so near and dear and at the heart of our faith. It is a lasting tradition of recognizing the importance of life that we are each made in the image and likeness of God and from the moment of our conception, we are endowed with a soul that one day we will return hopefully to the Lord in heaven with our soul. And at the end of time, with the final ending of time, our bodies will rise and be reunited with our souls. But we need to encourage our children to respect that life again from the moment of conception. If we can't participate in major events such as the March in Washington, there's so much we can do in our own parish, in our own hometown, just to recognize and have people recognize that we value life and we're teaching our children to do that as well. The H in Catholic I've used to mean holiness. Holiness is not just something for priests and religious, it is for everyone. The dogmatic constitution of the church in 1964 reminds us, and I quote, that all in the church, whether they begin, belong to the hierarchy or are cared for by it, are called to holiness. So that we recognize that created by God through baptism, we are called to holiness to become fully that image of God that he made us, and that we do that through the practice of virtue. All are called to this, but we cannot do it by ourselves. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need God's many graces in order to help us do that. And we also need to learn to develop a relationship with Jesus, to come to know who is Jesus, not just who do people say that he is, we need to know what our faith teaches, but also who is Jesus in my life, in your life, in your students' lives. That's where we learn to teach our young people to pray with scripture. Obviously, the sacraments are the life-giving, nurturing spirit of our church. Just as the body needs food to nourish it, the soul needs food for the soul. It comes through the graces that we receive in the sacraments, beginning with baptism, confirmation as that final step in being initiated. And in between there, receiving the sacrament of penance 
and being nurtured every time we go to Mass and receive the Eucharist in Holy Communion. And then receiving sacraments for life, holy orders, matrimony, and then that beautiful sacrament of the sick for those who are ill, for those who are in danger of dying. And we need to recognize how important prayer is in spending time each day with the Lord to come to know him and in knowing him to come to learn how we can love him more and love others. And this we need to teach to our children. These are just the basics. And yet so often we can forget because especially now in a return from COVID, we are going to feel that pressure of trying to get up to speed, possibly trying to renew our academics. Many of our schools were so blessed to be open, but even being open, there were the pressures of children being absent, of trying to have virtual classes at the same time we might have been in session or some days in and some days out. And so we want to be certain that we don't forget the importance of prayer, sacraments, and scripture. These are the keys to developing our holiness and in teaching them to our children, helping them to develop their holiness. The O in Catholic stands for outreach and service. Faith motivates us to reach out to others. We need to instill that same desire to serve others in our students. We know that Jesus washed the feet of the apostles, and so we are called to do the same thing. Perhaps not washing the feet of the apostles, but making cards for shut-ins, visiting senior citizens at a luncheon, possibly in the school hall, entertaining them if we're older. For the older students, visiting nursing homes or helping in a soup kitchen, helping a neighbor mowing the lawn, clearing the ice from the path so they don't fall. Things that children can learn to do in imitation of their parents and then realize that they are doing this also as an act of loving God, loving Jesus, and bringing that love of Jesus to their neighbor. Helping with food and clothing drives. We do such a beautiful job of this, particularly at Thanksgiving and Christmas, but other times of the year. And most recently with Pope Francis' beautiful document, Laudato Si, we know that we must care for the earth not wasting electricity or water, not throwing things haphazardly on the ground to destroy the earth that God has given us, being careful what we use and how we use the resources because we are so blessed in this country. When we look at some of the issues in the world around us today, when we look at the terrible tragedies that some of our neighbors to the South, particularly in Haiti most recently have suffered, the terrible things that happen to our friends right within the United States with so many hurricanes, tornadoes, things that will impede the growth of crops, wipe out someone's livelihood and existence. We need to care for the earth, but we need to connect the dots. When we do these things, when we have children do service for confirmation or for senior graduation, we need to keep reminding them that they are following and imitating what Jesus would do. We're not just doing it because it's a nice thing to do. It is, and it's a good humanitarian thing. But in our Catholic schools, we need to remind our young people that we are imitating Jesus and we are following in his footsteps. So we connect those dots so they don't miss those opportunities. The L stands for liturgy. Obviously, Jesus himself gave us the Eucharist, which he instituted at the Last Supper. He also gave us all of the sacraments. When we start going through scripture, we see that. And we know that at every Mass, the priest consecrates the bread and wine to become the true body and blood of Jesus. The Mass is our central act of worship. It is part of the public worship of the church, combined of liturgy of word and liturgy of Eucharist. We're blessed in our elementary schools with the responsibility 
of preparing our young people to receive the first sacraments, possibly baptism, most definitely first penance and Eucharist, the first time they do that. It's important that we prepare them well, age appropriately, give them a tour of the church or the chapel, ask one of the priests to show them vestments and altar vessels and explain why we use these things and what their meaning is for us. But then we also need to continue that preparation beyond the reception of the first sacraments and confirmation, which is only received once, we need to recognize that when we have mass at school or when we have confessions at school, we need to continually prepare our young people so that they understand the meaning of these sacraments as they grow in age and they learn how to be attentive age appropriately. How to go to confession is different when you're seven than it is when you're 16. And so many of our young people today do not have as many opportunities to take advantage of receiving the sacrament of penance. So when we offer it, we need to review it. We need to go over it with our young people so that they're not afraid of it, but that they see it as a beautiful encounter with the Lord. And the same with Eucharist. When we go to mass, it may be your class's turn to prepare the liturgy. But in those weeks or months that you are I, what I call the participating congregation, this is an opportunity to remind our young people of what are we saying when we say amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To teach those responses again, not to beat them to death, but to, as they grow in age, continue to teach them what their meaning is. Age appropriately to build on increasing their reverence in church. How do we genuflect? Why do we genuflect? Where do we genuflect? Not to the back door, not to the pew, but in front of the tabernacle. Why? Because Jesus is present. How do we bless ourselves with holy water? And why do we take holy water? if we get back to having holy water. Some parishes have been able to do that, some have not as yet. But we don't lose the meaning of holy water as a reminder of our baptism, our promises, and making that sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And why are we silent at mass? It is not the time to talk to my neighbor. It is the time to talk to Jesus. We also need to prepare our young people for other liturgical seasons and services. Just because we did it last year doesn't mean they know what to do this year or why we do it. And prayer in the classroom is so important. When you pray with your children, teach them to pray, but pray with them. You want them to pray and be attentive. So as a teacher, you cannot be taking attendance or getting out books. You need to pray with them as well. But as a side note, you also need to pray yourself in your own time and place as an adult. It is not something old fashioned. It is not just something for kids. It is for all of us. And we need to recognize that. The I in Catholic identity is to inform and instruct. We need to teach our students why we value Catholic education. Let them know why you chose to teach in a Catholic school. Because Jesus is important, because you want to share your faith with them. Teach them the meaning and purpose of action. So if I have a virtue of the month, it's not just something I do because there's a prize at the end of the month, but help them to understand what is virtue? What are those actions of being reverent, respectful, hopeful, trusting? not lying or cheating. And why do we do those things? Again, we want to imitate Jesus. We want to be certain that we are instructing our students authentically in the faith and how they need to put that faith into practice. If you don't have an answer for something, it's perfectly okay to say, you know, I'm not quite sure. Let me look that up for you and I'll get back to you tomorrow. Better to give them correct information than give them something that is not appropriate or really not correct. 
they understand that. They can go to the internet, some of them, as they get older and look things up, but they still need your guidance. So that religion class must be for all students, even those who are of other faiths. If their parents have chosen to bring them to a Catholic school, we are saying that they want them to be surrounded by the faith, the morals, the virtues that provide for good living. Those children may not necessarily convert to Catholicism, but they can at least study our Catholic faith so they will respect it and understand why we do what we do. And they will see or try to see from our perspective the importance of faith and the principles of faith in our lives. Especially as children get older, but it needs to start young. We need to help them recognize that living our Catholic faith demands that we are countercultural in witnessing to the gospel. It may not be cool, it may not be in, but we must remind them that we are made not only for this life, but Jesus made us, going back to an old catechism question, to know him, to love him, to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him in the next. This is what we need to remind our children. When we teach them the gifts of the Holy Spirit, for example, they learn them for confirmation, and the bishop asks questions. It's great that they can say wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. But take those apart, break them open, and age appropriately, help them understand what does each of those gifts ask them to do? What does each of those gifts give them the grace to do? And how can they put those gifts into practice? So that they not only can answer what are the seven gifts, but they can begin to understand and put them into practice. Finally, the word C in the word Catholic allows us to recognize curriculum and classroom. Obviously, we need to follow the religion curriculum of our school and our diocese so that we have authentic teaching of the faith. We need to encourage our students to dialogue to ask questions respectfully, and to be tolerant of other people's faith and creeds. We believe in our Catholic faith, but we need to be tolerant and respectful of all faiths so that others will see that Christ life within us. We need to create that atmosphere in our classroom, prayer corner, especially in the elementary grades, or a table with a Bible statues, lives of the saints, so that our school classrooms have a little different look than the classroom in another public school down the street. We not only have something showing our activities in math or science or English or reading or social studies or other areas, but we have something that shows our Catholicity, our faith. And we need to be certain that we, as we teach our children about the faith, that we create a meaningful application of what that faith means, something that is practical. We look and we see Jesus as the good shepherd. Well, we're not really out there with sheep in the backyard unless we're on a farm. And that's a great example. But if you're in the middle of New York City or Washington, D.C., you're probably not herding sheep. And so what does that story tell us? So we take that story and we talk about Jesus' love and care for each one of us. So we need to be up and moving quickly to make those stories meaningful and to help them to interpret what those stories, what those parables that Jesus gave us are all about. And we need to promote those virtues in our classrooms, whether it's a virtue of the month or the semester or the year or virtue in general, especially respect for one another and responsibility, caring for myself, caring and being responsible for the work entrusted to me. We go on and look at the I, which stands for integrate in the word Catholic. 
who are we as Catholics or members of Catholic schools? How are we going to integrate our faith into other subjects, language, history, science, math, arts? Religion is not only a class, but it must become a way of life that is integral and meaningful for everyone. So for example, you might think about how do you integrate faith into your literature class? Even in a young child's class of stories of fables, fairy tales, stories in the readers, when you look at the character, you don't have to overplay it, but talk about what is the virtue that the character is practicing or what is the lack of virtue, especially when you get into high school and you get into literary themes and uh, the reasons of the downfall of the character. Uh, let it be an opportunity to talk about what the character did that was right and what the character did that was wrong and equate it with virtue. When you're looking at history, look at something, you know, such as the Industrial Revolution and talk about the respect for humanitarian principles, the right to vote. And what did that mean about respecting individuals and all those major events in history? Letting those be an opportunity as you teach the regular curriculum. To just be able to insert something that relates to our faith. Science, being able to just look in a microscope and look and see one tiny cell and all the parts, all the precision, all the design. And unlike our public school counterparts, just being able to say, look at the majesty and beauty and wonder of God in his creation. And then obviously art and, and music they have always been such beautiful expressions of faith. As you look into past eras of religious art, religious music, a great way of integrating. As you talk about the various aspects of time and meter and, and how to engage and recognize a work from one period of music or art or another. And finally, math. You know, um, I often used to say when I would interview teachers, I didn't really know what would be a good answer for that. I'm an English teacher and a religion teacher. But math, great idea someone shared with me. Sister, you know, behind me in my classroom, there's a number line. And it has no beginning. And it has no end. And we teach the children the concept of infinity. No beginning, no end. She said, and I just make a casual reference. That's how God is. He has no beginning and he has no end. He's infinite. So we don't need to turn our classes into a total religion class. But the reality is we have opportunities to integrate the faith into everything else that we do so that our young people recognize that it is more than a class. It is definitely a way of life. So when we then look at the D in identity, what is the mission of a Catholic school? We need to be dedicated to that. We need to recognize that we're trying to form our young people in the faith and we need to be rooted in Christ. What does your school mission say? What does it say about service, diversity? How does it talk about peace and social justice? And how do you integrate that into your teaching as well? But it's so important that we know our mission so we can enact our mission and we can put it into practice. Without that, we flounder. And so our children need to know the mission. We need to know the mission. I was in a school many years ago and I was in a first grade classroom and, I, you know, I asked them, you know, what do you like about your school? We get to pray. We get to go to mass, recess. And then a little person raised his hand and he said, we learn to become critical thinkers. And first grade, and I said, really? I said, what is a critical thinker? And in first grade language, he explained it. 
So I said, well, what else can you tell me about your school? And the next child raised a hand and I saw the eyes floated. And I suddenly saw in each of the four corners of the classroom, there was a little flag and on the little flag in language appropriate for a first grader, the four goals of the mission statement of the school were there. So these children learned that mission statement from first grade. And I thought, I wonder if our teachers and principals can enunciate the mission statement as clearly as these little guys did. And they were so good, they were so cute, but they were taught that and they knew what it meant. They could explain it age appropriately. So we need to be dedicated to our mission. You know, again, going back to that idea, why did you come to teach in a Catholic school? Especially great for our older students to understand why you're teaching there instead of in another school. Because your faith is important because you want to share your faith. And so when we don't talk about these things, our children can assume they're not important. Hence, as we return back to more of a normal life, we hope, uh, we need to be certain that we are revitalizing ourselves in an enthusiasm to bring this faith alive for our young people. The E in identity is for example. Our personal example is the best way to teach Catholic virtue and values. St. Francis of Assisi is famous for saying, preach and if necessary, use words. We teach so much by our example. How are we at prayer in the classroom or at mass? Are we talking to people? If we do, they will. What kind of conversations do we have with faculty, staff, administrators? What do our students hear? Do they hear respectful tones? Do they hear humor and joy? Or do they hear complaints and grumbling and even sometimes inappropriate language? What is the body language? that we use. For example, when an announcement comes over the PA system that interrupts our lesson, oh, here we go again. We may not say anything, but if our body shows that, we teach our young people not to pay attention to it. And so we need to think about our language, body language, verbal language, and example and then be certain that we're trying to share that with our young people that they will imitate the good that we do. Do we teach according to what the church teaches? In all of our schools, we have that opportunity with good solid theology in our religion books and in high school with a good department chair. Uh, and of course the priests in our parish who can guide us if we are having a question and not sure what to teach or how to handle it. But we need to teach authentically. And if we do not teach religion because we're teaching science or we're a coach or we're teaching history or language, then are we faithful to what the church teaches when the students ask us questions? Because they're interested in knowing, do you really believe this stuff that we're being taught? Do you? Because they're questioning and they know the religion teacher is going to say it. But boy, if the coach can talk about, I go to mass on Sunday, or the coach can talk about respecting life, it adds to the vigor and the reality of what's being taught in the religion class. The N in identity, no one and nothing is exempt. It is not only for religion teachers, but for everyone who is part of the faculty and staff. Why did you choose to teach in a Catholic school? even if you're not teaching religion. We all share in that important work of helping to form our young people in the faith as we also help them to develop their full potential as children of God, using the gifts and talents that God has made for them and given to them. We need to show, and everyone in our Catholic school community needs to show an appreciation of faith and how we are a caring community. 
We need to look for ways to integrate and make that faith part of our class, whether formally in teaching, in example, and personal authenticity, and the integrity that we show our students between what we teach and who we are. Very, very important. Finally, when we talk about the T in teach, we talk about be who you are and be that well. I believe St. Francis de Sales said that. We need to teach the faith and form our students. We need, first of all, to continue to cultivate our own personal relationship with Jesus. And then in doing that, we are better able to share that with our students and help them to do that. We need to take time for our own personal prayer and recognize how important Jesus is in our lives, my life, your life, and then teach that to our young people. It's an ongoing lifetime process and we need to teach by word and example. St. Francis de Sales, that motto of live Jesus, we all carry that image of Christ in the world. Through our baptism, we carry the Holy Spirit. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus encourages us to spend time with him, to get to know him so that we can be more like him and we can become our best self. Because the more that we are able to practice virtue, we're called in baptism, to develop a deeper, richer, more vibrant image of God that God has given us, but we need to continue to develop that. And we do that by practicing virtue. We are made then in God's image and likeness because we can know the truth and God is truth. We can love God and others and God is love. We can act freely in reference to truth and good. God has given us a free will because in order to truly operate like he does, to be like he is, we need to be able to choose to act in reference to what is true and good. We need to recognize that anything that we are, the greatness we have, the gifts we have that make us more like God, they all come from him. And to the degree that we care for our local community, our family, our parish, our local community, we reflect God who is community, three persons in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, caring for one another in the Trinity. What a beautiful, beautiful image that we carry forward. The next T is for transforming. Holiness and a spiritual life are for everyone. Being serious about our faith, we need to recognize that we can live that life wherever God has placed us at this moment. It's not just being a priest or a sister. It's being a mother, a father, a single person, a student. It's being a principal, a superintendent. It's being a teacher of preschool or senior physics or anything in between. Christianity does not take us away from our normal activities, but it's not just something added on, but the way we live our ordinary activities should be a reflection of our love of God and our love of neighbor. And because we are not perfect, we need to remind ourselves and we need to remind our young people. This is at the heart of Catholic identity. Pope Benedict spoke so beautifully in Deus Caritas Est, God is Love, that in addition to needing the professional preparation as teachers, we all need that formation of the heart. And this is what can be so easily forgotten, especially when we feel that we've got to get scores up and we've got to achieve with math and reading. And we do have to do all those things. But let's not forget what is at the heart of our being. 
and the heart of a Catholic school. We are created for the faith formation that our young people are formed in Christ and therefore the formation of their hearts to love God above all things and to love their neighbor as themselves. And finally, the why and identity is for youth and you. The catechesis is not just what we do for our students, it's also what we do for ourselves. We are called to keep up on what is the church saying? What is the church teaching? What did the Holy Father say about? And so we need to continue to grow. And as we grow, we age appropriately help our young people to grow, maybe in different issues, different ideas. But as we grow, we're motivated to help them grow. We also are more confident when we study about our faith and learn it, we are more confident in wanting to teach it. And so it comes from an old adage that says, you cannot give what you do not have. We need to grow in our faith, in our knowledge, in our love of God. And in doing that, whether we're Catholic or not, we are able to then share that love of God with the people around us, whether it is our faculty and staff, are the students and their parents. Understanding the meaning, value, and application of Catholic identity for ourselves and our lives enables us then to share, shape, inform, form, and transform our students. What will you do for yourselves and your youth now and in the future? As we move on, I would like you to reflect on this passage from Mother Teresa. Yesterday is gone and hopefully most of COVID with it. She didn't say that part. Tomorrow has not yet come and we have only today. Let us begin. The important thing is that I would hope you would go back through this presentation and look at some of the things that are most precious to you about your Catholic faith, about your Catholic school. And make certain that as you engage in teaching all of the important academic subjects, that you make time to revitalize, renew, reform, and enthusiastically share how important your faith is to you so that if you're an administrator, it will be contagious to your faculty. And if you're a faculty or staff member, it will be contagious to your children, your students, and their families. And together, as we emerge from this COVID life, so to speak, that we've all been bound into for such a long time, we will see that Catholic identity is alive but it's only alive because we are making the effort and taking the time to make it come alive. So I hope that as you continue to engage in this year and as time goes on, that you will recognize that our Catholic identity focuses us on Christ. Christ must be the root of our lives, certainly the root of our faith, and that formation in the faith, in coming to know Jesus, and in growing our hearts, making them open to know and love him so that we then are better able to interact with one another. This is the fruit that will come forth from being members of a Catholic school community. Thank you for listening this afternoon or this morning, whenever you've picked this up. And I hope if I can answer anything for you, that you will please feel free to contact me. I direct the Catholic School Leadership Program at Marymount University in Arlington, Virginia. My email is patricia.earl, E-A-R-L, at marymount, M-A-Y-M-O-U-N-T, dot E-D-U. Patricia.earl at marymount, dot E-D-U. Please take some time to think about what I've shared 
and think about what you want to share with others in your faculty, particularly at this midpoint of the fall semester. With a video conference, I did not take the time to break because I don't know who is in groups or who is individual. But I hope that you will take these thoughts and talk about what do you do in your schools? What can you continue to do to build the Catholic identity and to make that love of Jesus come alive in your hearts and in the hearts of all? Thank you and God bless you.